Welcome to Animals Voice Podcast. I'm your host, Kevin McKenzie, and very excited this week to be joined by Dr. Jackie Parr. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Jackie, uh, Dr. Parr, you're joining us from Royal Canaan, Canada, where you are veterinary clinical nutritionist. That's correct. Also adjunct faculty at the Ontario Veterinary College, right? Yes, I spend a lot of time teaching veterinary students about pet nutrition. Wow, well, you're here today to teach me and our listeners uh, and viewers about nutrition for their pets. So we're we're excited to have access to your mind uh, for, for this broadcast today. When you're talking about nutritional assessment, can you explain to our listeners what is nutritional assessment? Absolutely, so the nutritional assessment really involves looking at three different pieces. So we evaluate the animal. We also look at the diet that they're eating, and that includes all the little treats and human foods that they're getting. So on top of their regular diet. And then we also look at how the owner's feeding them. Is there potential competition for food? Those sorts of things. So we really look at those three pieces. And then the veterinarian needs all that information and they put that together with a really good physical exam and sometimes doing blood work or looking at the urine and that helps them to determine what's going to be the best diet to feed to your pets. So one diet doesn't fit all, obviously. How do different pets uh, differ on nutritional needs? Absolutely. So we could have two dogs, say we have Labrador retrievers and they are both from the same litter. If we have one of them that's involved in agility events and is really active and we have one who really likes to sit on the couch and watch Netflix with their owner, they're going to have... That's, that's my situation. The, the, yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my, my dogs are hockey watchers, so yeah. they watch the hockey game with me. But um, it's one of those things where they would have different energy needs and they might have different requirements for different nutrients based on some of those activities that they're taking part in. So an active dog might have a bit higher protein requirement, for example, if they are really involved in more strenuous activities um, so that they can maintain all that nice muscle mass for activity. Okay, so that nutritional assessment, I'm guessing, can impact an animal's quality of life. Absolutely. How? Can because you explain how? Absolutely. So knowing that a pet is on the best diet for that individual pet means that they're going to be getting all the nutrients that they need every day. A lot of the things that we find when we're doing a nutritional assessment that pets are receiving way too many treats. So as a good general rule of thumb, about 90% of what your pet eats should be that complete and balanced dog or cat food. And then only 10% of calories should be, you know, table scraps, supplements, (laughs) um, you know, treats. And it's very easy for a pet owner to be giving 40 to 50% of calories. So I joke about it. A good rule of thumb is if the treat's bigger than the animal's head, it's it's too much. So (laughs) it's it's unbalanced, right? It's, It's too much. But making sure that most of what they're receiving is that complete and balanced diet is going to give them everything that they need. And our goal is that our pets are going to live long and healthy lives. So the other thing that a nutritional assessment is really good for is assessing things like body composition. So looking at the pet's weight and are they potentially carrying a little too much body fat? Because there's been a study done actually in Labrador retrievers where they looked at labs that were just slightly overweight versus the ones that were ideal body weight. Mm -hmm. And those are normally the ones people call skinny, but they're really ideal. The ones that were slightly overweight lived almost two years shorter than the dogs that were in ideal body weight. So your veterinarian having this nutritional assessment and actually making sure that your pet maintains that perfect body condition score has the potential to not only improve the pet's quality of life, but their longevity as well. And I know about you, but I want my li- my pets to live as long as no, possible. I, so <laughs> I, I have a black lab at home. Yes. And uh, I can hear her packing her bags right now because you've now convinced me I need to stop with the table scrap. <laughs> good, 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 good. She's, she's going to be staring at me intently we're tonight. Having, we're having an intervention. We so. are. <laughs> so I mean, what, what's the best way to learn my specific pet's uh, needs when it comes to their nutrition? Absolutely. So one 
of the best things to do would be to fill out this form with your veterinary team. This is a great handout that's been put together by the World Small Animal Veterinary Association. If I can interject for yeah. our listeners that are not viewing the YouTube version and video of this yes. podcast, you're holding up um, a document and form. So to, to have an actual peek at this, they might want to go back to our blog and, yes. and have a look at this. Absolutely. That would be great. I interrupted you. Continue. No problem. No problem. And so the idea here is that the veterinary team, so the receptionists, the vet techs, and the veterinarians can look at what's the pet's activity level like? Are there multiple pets in the home? Are they growing or are they senior pets? Because all those pets can have special nutritional needs. Mm -hmm. And then we can look at things as well as how how often are they pooping in the backyard and is their poop normal that's something that's very concerning for a pet owner and it is a sign that they're on a proper diet if they have good healthy poops so very very important and the veterinary team wants to know about that um, other things that we would pay attention to would be medical conditions of course if the pet has a medical condition they need oftentimes a medical diet that's going to really provide appropriate nutrition for that disease okay. so does, does this always need to be done by a vet? Yes, because you really need to have a complete physical exam. So someone with medical training needs to be able to do the physical exam because you want to look at the teeth and make sure they can chew the poo properly. You want to look at the skin and coat and make sure that's a really good sign that well, a it, pet's on great nutrition. It looks nutrition. like a very comprehensive checklist that you're Absolutely. showing. Absolutely. I'm thinking if you're not a vet and you're a layman... Uh, Having that informa information is one thing, but knowing Absolutely. what to do with it is entirely something else. Well, and just even interpreting blood work because, okay. you know, diagnosing with a disease really influences what diet the pet needs to go on and a veterinarian needs to be the one to interpret that blood work. Okay. Absolutely. When, when we uh, get back from this break, we're going to talk about ways pet owners can stay on top of their pet's nutrition. Wonderful. Uh, we're enjoying our time with Dr. Jackie Parr here on Animals Voice Podcast, and we'll be right back. Thank you. Welcome back to Animals Voice Podcast. We're here with Dr. Jackie Parr, veterinary clinical nutritionist with Royal Canin Canada. So happy to have you here today Thank and you. a wealth of information and knowledge already being shared. So we're appreciative of that. Um, what are ways that pet owners can stay on top of their pet's nutrition? Absolutely. So seeing a vet on a regular basis is, is very important yeah. because when they go to the vet clinic, they can have that assessment done and make sure that they are on the best diet. So if you go through a nutritional assessment and everything looks perfect, that means your pet is doing great on that diet. So it would also be an idea that not to change the diet without asking your veterinarian because we would want to make sure that if your pet's doing really, really well on the diet that they're on right now, that your vet would be aware if you were making any changes uh, because vets know lots about interpreting, you know, what diet the pet's on, body weight, diagnostics, all those sorts of things. So it's important to make sure your vet knows whenever you change the diet. Okay. And, and I guess what you've just said leads to my next question, which was, uh, the important thing for pet owners to know is that every nutritional need is individual to that animal. Absolutely. You can't assume, like you said earlier in the interview, uh, if you have two pets, what works for one breed or one size absolutely. or one age animal might not be the same for the other. Right? Absolutely. You're, you're absolutely correct. And um, the classic example is you have a household with two cats in it and mm -hmm. one of them just absolutely loves to eat and they start to become a little bit plump. And then you tend to have one that's not as interested in the food bowl and, and maybe starts to get a little bit on the thin side. So each of those pets has really different needs. The one that started to gain weight probably needs a weight loss plan. And then the other one who's not been as interested in eating really needs an exam to figure out why are they not interested in eating. So that's a classic situation. Usually once you get one cat, you love them so much, you get more. Right, so right. Uh, there's multiple cats and, and each one of them needs to be fed a very different diet it just we've moved on from the approach of just having one food bowl that's a, a community bowl for all the cats in the household and really trying to figure out ways to feed them all separately and sometimes you have to get creative oh, with yeah. Yeah. um you know having you know a little box with a kitty flap that only one cat can go in um or you know if one cat the smaller cat can fit under the bed but the bigger cat can't maybe they're fed under the bed maybe you feed them separately one goes in a bathroom one goes 
in a bedroom. You know, there's there's ways that your vet can help you get creative. Yeah. Everything you just said is it's hitting close to home. Yeah. I have two cats, yes. two dogs, and there are four different types of pet food going on in excellent, my house right now. Excellent. All of them Royal Canaan, for the, for the record, <laughs> and that, that's not a lie. Um, speaking of Royal Canaan, I want to know, when you arrived at this point in your career, I mean, first of all, do you choose this as a career path because you're an animal lover already, or did you find yourself in this career and realize you really love animals? What came first? It was the love of animals that came first. I actually, as a as a child, I would try to bargain with my parents, so I would offer them that I would clean the house for a month if they would let me <laughs> adopt a pet. Yeah, so it has it has always been been part of my life. And then as I got older, I realized, wow, you could actually make a career doing something that you love. And for me, the other piece was my love of nutrition. And so I did my undergrad in animal biology, and then I got into veterinary school, and I started looking at specializing. And once I found that there was a way to become a board-certified veterinary clinical nutritionist, I knew that that was going to be the path for me. It was just how was I going to make it happen. So I spent four years in undergrad, four years in vet school, I did an internship for a year, an emergency internship in Boston, and then I did a three-year residency. And to try to speed stuff up, I did my master's at the same time as the residency um, in biochemical nutrition. And then I came back and just finished a postdoc and being a clinician at the Ontario Veterinary College in August. And then very happy to have been um, offered a job with with Royal Canin. Um, their quality control, their commitment to the environment really just spoke to me. And the fact that it is a pet first company, that's what I've always wanted to do. For me, I'm a, a veterinarian and a pet lover first. Yeah. And when I knew that that was, that was a possibility for working with this company, that was something that really, really spoke to me. That's so, tremendous. Yeah. Do you have pets right now? I do. I have two babies. Both of them have been adopted at different points in time. So uh, my older dog is Hennessy. She is a ductolar mix and so very pretty. She's got the yellowy eyes and uh, we call her Henny Penny for short. And then uh, as I was leaving Boston, I really fell in love with Boston Terriers, hence the, the shirt that I'm wearing today. <laughs> and I knew I was going to miss all the crazy people I, I met in Boston. So I decided to Great adopt a, a, it's a wonderful yeah, city. It. I decided to adopt this adorable little Boston Terrier puppy. And so um, little Chickpea is my dog's name. Yes, the nutritionist named her dog after <laughs> after a food. Um, and they just, they really get along well. They love each other. And whenever Hennessy smushes Chickpea when they're playing, we call it getting hummus to my sister and I. Oh, so awesome. Yeah. So it just, it's taken on a life of its own and <laughs> they are they are my pride and joy those two so can you leave work at work I mean are you able yeah. to, uh, to just go home and be a pet owner and, and lover of your animals and not be thinking about oh I, I gave Hennessy, a piece of the pizza crust, and that, that's enough for him tonight. Like, are you able to leave it at home? Well, or, not not for my own pets. I'm one of those people who definitely, you know, when I I figure out my pets, you know, allotment of food during the day, and so. For both of my dogs, even when my sister is babysitting them for me, we use a gram scale okay. to weigh out the food. So you take the little gram scale, you put the bowl on, and you measure out the food. So, right. you know, chickpea gets 65 grams in the morning and, and 65 grams at night. And so... They're both on veterinary medical diets, so the whole treats part just doesn't happen. I'm yeah. very, very strict about that, but yeah. they both love the kibble, and you can ask them, you know, if I save part of that dinner meal, I put it in food puzzles right. for chickpea. Um, she absolutely loves being busy and, um, <clears throat> excuse me, working for her food, so... You can absolutely do that with kibble. And when they enjoy the kibble that they're eating, it's just, it's the best thing for their medical diets. Well, you know what? Uh, we know animals do like uh, Royal Canin and working for their food in that way. We are very lucky at the Ontario SPCA because over the last year and a bit, we've, we've forged a tremendous relationship with your organization. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you provide food to our shelters. You help us in really... Uh, so many ways. I, I don't have the time to go into them all, but I wanted to highlight one way that's coming up. And right now it's the, you know, I adopt for the holidays um, time of year. Yes. And we've got some contests coming up. And yes. again, when we have stuff, you know, we're, we're a nonprofit organization. We turn of to course. our friends whenever we need things. And 
You must get sick of us calling, but... Um, oh, never. <laughs> one, <laughs> thank you. Once again, Royal Canaan has answered the call and uh, given us some prizes to share with our listeners and, and with followers on social media. Um, two different things I wanted to highlight. First of all, the uh, hashtag, hashtag I adopt that we're yeah. doing right now. So people can share photos or stories about their adopted animal yes. and they hashtag it with I adopt. Uh, you do this on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram, and uh, there will be weekly prizes that the Ontario SPCA is awarding to people based on all of that activity on social media. And those weekly prizes, by and large, came from our friends at Royal Canaan. Yes. So thank you. We've got really cool animal swag, I'll yes. call it. We've got frisbees and animal toys. We've got mm -hmm. food bowls, all sorts of neat stuff for the, the weekly prizes. Yes. But if you visit iadopt.ca, there's a big grand prize that we're going to be giving away. And a, it's pet food for a year yes. from Royal Canaan. Absolutely. Uh, so we want to encourage everybody to uh, visit iadopt.ca, enter this contest, and listen. I don't know about you. I've got 200-pound dogs, and, and uh, that's a lot of food. You go through uh, a lot of kibble. So, uh, it's it, worth every penny, though, right? It is worth every penny. I'm not complaining, <laughs> yeah. but free food for a year would be awesome. Oh, so, I know. Uh, it's one of those things. Absolutely. I agree with you. And then, you know, if you were lucky enough to be the person who wins the free food for a year, what a great opportunity to go see your vet, talk to them about what diet should I be selecting exactly. from Royal Canaan? Because there are for, so many options. Yes, for my pet's needs, what one would you recommend? There are over-the-counter diets, there's veterinary diets that you can really hone in on what does that individual pet need, which would be perfect. A great so, time to do that. Listen, yeah. Dr. Jackie Parr, thank you for joining us oh, on Animals Voice you. Podcast. Uh, hopefully we'll get a chance to talk to you again in the future. Yes. Yeah. And uh, thank you, the listeners of Animals Voice Podcast, for joining us, watching us on YouTube. This is a new thing. I'm still getting used to it. I don't play to the <laughs> camera at all yeah. <laughs> I'm told I have a face for radio and I think they're insulting me so uh, please send us your show ideas at uh, my email address is kmckenzie at ospca.on.ca you can find me on twitter at kev the grad and uh, we look forward to uh, you continuing to share our broadcasts thank you so much for all of your support Dr. Jackie we'll talk thank to you, you again thank you so since uh, since 2000 we've been in partnership with Ontario SPCA just to be able to deliver a credit so now, like all BMO credit cards, uh, they all come 